Why are you making this film? Last year, I drove over the home bridge on two separate occasions where I saw a person standing on the edge, ready to jump. And when you see that, you immediately ask yourself all these questions. One of them being, how does a person get to that point? Ah, oh, the hardest thing I ever had to do. Get over a girl. And you know, I went out with this girl for seven years and you know, she comes home one day and she's like, I just can't do this anymore. From one day we're lovers and the next day we're roommates. It wasn't until then that I started spiraling down. That's when all the negative self-thought comes in. You think you're worthless and no one's gonna love you again. I was depressed and I had a motorcycle and I'm like, was just cruising around one day. I was driving over the hone and I was just like, man, I could crash right here and it would just look like an accident. Then I was like, would drive by and kind of scope places out. and I credit one of the people that saved me was somebody I didn't even know. Sometimes when you don't know somebody, you're a little more apt to share a lot of personal stuff. You know, we were working alongside one another and I told him about, you know, the, what I was going through and, and he's the guy that, that taught me Reiki. Yeah, my family didn't know I was depressed, my friends, my coworkers, I didn't tell anyone. And I think that's where the problem lies is, you know, be open and be honest with the people that are around you. Did you stop when you saw somebody standing on the bridge? I did not. Fortunately, in both situations, there were already people there. People like John. Uh, I'm a deputy chief on the Milwaukee Fire Department. Uh, Marine Corps veteran, live in the city of Milwaukee, Bayview. My path of going home was a little different that day. And I saw a woman on top of the home bridge bright red hair, no one breaks down on top of the bridge. You could see that she was in distress and just reached out her hand and sat and talked to her and listened to her. What was the first thing that you said? Hello. It's, um, hello can, it can start anyone to Taking the time just to say hi to someone and make a difference. The more she was talking, the less she was thinking about jumping. All I was doing was listening. And I think that's key, is just to listen to what they have to say. But when the FBI agent got there, we were able to pass on some information. And then he took a step up and I took a step back. If not me, someone else would have been able to do the exact same thing. And it wasn't just me. This was from the first battalion chief that showed up to all the fire crews that showed up to the sheriffs, police, the FBI agent. We all came together that day and we all saved this woman's life and she was a part of it as well. She stepped back over the side. She saved her life as much as anyone else did. All I had was a hello. It, it worked. So how has working on this project affected you personally? As I've done these interviews, and I feel this sense of responsibility to tell these very personal stories in a respectful and meaningful way. And some of these stories deal with one person, but in the case of Mary, it's an entire family. I grew up in this family of caretakers where my 
parents modeled and instilled in us. You take care of each other. You have a responsibility to your fellow man and you leave this world a better place. And so some of my siblings went into nursing and healthcare. Others went into fire and EMS like my dad. Well, on the morning of May 20th, 1994, my younger brother, Paul, received a call. The bridge was in his jurisdiction as a firefighter. Got the call of a body in the water. Paul was dispatched and as he approached the bridge, saw personalized license plates, um, my brother's truck, my oldest brother, Charlie. And one of his first reactions was not one that Charlie was dead, but rather, oh, Charlie must have stopped to help. But in reality, things transpired very quickly. My little brother's responding to his older brother's death. Our world was really rocked that day when my brother jumped because we are caretakers. How did we not take care of this? But how do I deal with it? I, I do stress this to the people in my classes. All we can do is accept the gift of what we learned from it and go forth from there. And I also feel very strongly that I'm not responsible for my brother's death. But I'm responsible to everybody else I meet to make sure that no one else goes through this or experiences that kind of guilt. And that's a small change in a preposition. I'm not responsible for his death, but I'm responsible to others. A ch small change, but I think a powerful change. And that has helped me with my guilt. I look at anyone I meet or greet and, and try to greet them with a smile because I don't know if I'm the last person they're going to speak to. What have you learned from making the film? The one clear point that's come out of these interviews is the importance of small gestures from a complete stranger and how that can have a profound impact on a person's life. Anything from engaging a stranger, listening to someone, or even a simple smile can make a huge difference.